Remember Beetlejuice? Remember Dale? Mimby? Mimby the chair that walked? Member? Oh, I member. If you want your member berries tickled. Mimby the seance? Oh, I remember. I member. You need to watch this movie. Hello, hello, and welcome back, back to Booze Booze Reviews. Few, few. <laughs> well, hello, hello, and welcome back to Booze Booze Reviews. Reviews, where I, Aunt Boo Boo, drink some booze booze, and I reviews reviews movies movies. <laughs> it's Today's booze is a Beetlejuice cocktail. I found the greenest pre-made margarita mix that I could find, uh, rimmed my glass in some of this purple sugar, and then I added some ice, a finger sucker, marshmallow eyeball in there, and some night crawlers. Um, I couldn't find any other bugs, but that's okay. I got these finger things from the Dollar Tree and Mm. Okay, that's not bad. It's very sweet. Let's try it. It's good. You know what it needs though? It needs a straw. Oh yeah, I really like this finger. You think if I put this in the thumbnail, I'll get more subscribers? I feel like the whole thing in my mouth. Today's movie is Beetlejuice Beetlejuice, the long anticipated sequel to Footloose. Oh, kidding. Beetlejuice. <laughs> With a running time of one hour and 45 minutes, this movie is still out in theaters if you want to go see it at the theater, which is where I saw it today. It was only $6. My local theater has movies on Tuesdays for only $6. So I went by myself to see this movie. It was a big moment for me. Directed, of course, by Tim Burton. It stars Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton is 73 years old. And he can get it. He's my Batman. Now, forever, will be my Batman. He can get it. It also stars Winona Ryder and Catherine O'Hara. And Catherine O'Hara is marvelous. And who doubts it? It also stars Jenna Ortega, Justin Thoreau, Willem Dafoe and Monica Bellucci and newcomer Arthur Conti. So Beetlejuice Beetlejuice is getting a lot of flack flack. <laughs> I promise <laughs> I'm not going to do that again. Uh, this movie is getting mixed reviews for good reason. It just seems like people, people aren't loving it. And I would say the same. I didn't love it, but I didn't hate it either. You will for sure have your member berries tickled nicely by this movie, okay? If you fondly remember the original one, who doesn't? The original Beetlejuice was so good. And we have been waiting for this sequel for a really long time time. I think they waited too long. <laughs> I think they waited too long to give us a sequel. There are pros and cons of this, just like every movie. I don't know. It's hard, it's hard for me to say because I'm so in love with, <laughs> I'm so in love with Michael Keaton that I don't think he can do anything wrong. 
Have you ever seen Pacific Heights? You have got to watch Pacific Heights. That shit is scary. He was a psychopath in that movie. It was so f scary. So everyone's back for Beetlejuice, except because Gina Davis and Alec Baldwin look completely different now. Also, Alec Baldwin may or may not be a murderer. So there's that. And ghosts don't age. So you can't you can't bring them back because they will look completely... I mean, ghosts don't get plastic surgery, right? I, but Michael Keaton, because he looked dead in the first one, he, he looks exactly the same. The only difference is it's been 30-something years since he originally did this role. In the first one, he was a little more animated. He moved a lot more. And it was raunchier. He had a lot raunchier of lines. He had some, you know, very adult entertainment. And he was a lech. He was a total lech. And Lydia was underage. I'm pretty sure she was supposed to be, like, still in high school. And he tried to marry her. That's creepy. Let's talk about the things I did like first. Let's talk about that. Because I did like some things. The practical effects. Tim Burton is still doing his Tim Burton thing. So many of the effects are that throwback to the original movie that he uses those practical effects that really work to create his universe. The Tim Burton look and feel of the movie is very much there. And then they reprise the score, Danny Elfman, of course, and it just instantly brings you back into this world, this Beetlejuice world. And I do believe there are some CGI effects in the movie. I don't think they take away anything. I don't think they're distracting you from the practical effects. Uh, that he uses. And they're so well intertwined with the practical effects that they're really well done. And so it's fun. It's fun because you're not taken out of the world that Tim Burton has managed to create. I like that part. I love Michael Keaton. Again, he's slowed down a little bit. He's f***ing old now, so he can't do cartwheels and do all the dancing into a strip club that he used to do. I forgot I had a bobby pin in my hair. I just took it out. Michael Keaton isn't as quick and we can tell that. I don't think younger people are going to have an issue with that at all. I don't think they're going to mind. He's still got it. He's still got the Beetlejuice sass and we love that. I love it. I love that for him. I haven't decided if Winona Ryder is a good part or a bad part of the movie yet. She's, she's different. She sees things that we don't see. Like, for real. She is always looking like this. She's seen fairies or green little goblins or something all the time. I blame Johnny Depp. I think it's pretty safe to say that dating Johnny Depp makes women go crazy. It just makes him insane. It's the Johnny Depp effect. I don't know if she's any good in this movie because I want her to be good in the movie. I want her to come back as Lydia, but older. But uh, we'll get to why she kind of sucks in a little bit. I do like that they gave her a psychic ability. She's now a medium. She can see ghosts. She has this uh, TV show. It's Ghost House. And I love that. That's that's good character development that's using what went on in the first movie to impact the second one. That's brilliant. Great. Good. Okay, Catherine O'Hara, of course, she's amazing and everything. I like that they didn't try to bring Jeffrey Jones back actually 
but they did bring his character back in a weird way. Ugh, that's going to be on the stuff that I don't like. I like Jenna Ortega. She has a creepy face and a creepy little body. It's like a tiny body and a, and a giant creepy face. But she can act. And she's making some very strategic career moves right now. And you think, oh, she's backing herself into a corner. She's going to get typecast because she's been in Scream. She's been Wednesday. And now she's in this Beetlejuice movie. But I think she's setting us up. I think she's setting us up so that in a few years, mark my words, come back to this video in a few years when Jenna Ortega is being nominated for an Oscar. She's going to bust out of this stereotype and as the creepy girl, and she is going to star and take a really dramatic turn in a very serious movie. And all of us are going to be like, is that Wednesday? What a terrific actress. Just, just watch, just you watch. I bet, I bet that's what's gonna happen. I know these things. And I like her character in this movie. I like that, I like that she has a similar issue as Lydia did with her parents, where there's some neglect going on and she feels kind of betrayed by the amount of time that her mother has spent with ghosts as opposed to paying attention to her. And so I like that. I like that storyline. I like the storyline of her meeting the new boy. I actually like the character of the kid that she ends up meeting and then their plot line. That would have been enough. That would have been enough for me if the whole movie would have been should have been that one plot. There are some major problems that I have with the movie, which I'm sure everyone has these problems with it. It's too convoluted. There's too much going on and there's too many characters. Okay, when you have a sequel, there is a very easy formula to follow to make that sequel successful. First, you want to build on the universe that was already established in the first movie. This movie does that. It builds on the universe that Tim Burton created of the underworld and the afterlife. And it makes it really cool. We get more scenes. We get more information about what the afterlife holds. And we get a lot, of more, a lot more cool um, practical effects and special effects. That's great. Second part of the formula is you introduce a new character, which they did in Jenna Ortega's character. And she is the daughter of Winona Ryder. She is Lydia's daughter and her father died a while, a while ago. And so Lydia is a single mother raising, her name is Astrid, Jenna Ortega's character is Astrid. And so in introducing this new character, okay, check. And then you up the emotional stakes of the hero and you give them a quest, a conflict to overcome something that ups the emotional stakes of what they're doing. And this did that too, by sending Lydia's daughter into the underworld and Lydia has to go rescue her. That should have been the entire movie. That plot is all we really needed because Jenna Ortega is a good enough actress to carry that storyline. So is Michael Keaton. I'm going to give Winona Ryder a pass, even though she's got crazy eyeballs. And most of her character is annoying because she lets her daughter make her feel bad. And then she ends up just moping. She's just a mope. She's just walking around with this mopey, sad ass face on her face. Bath salts? Is it bath salts that Winona Ryder is on? I think it's bath salts. It's got to be bath salts that make your eyes that way. I would have taken out Monica Bellucci, even though the effects of her character are really cool. 
her plot isn't bad, but it's too much. I think they could have saved that whole storyline and embellished on it and made it better and richer, made her a better kind of character. But she just, she's this, she's, she's Beetlejuice's soul-sucking ex. Don't we all have one of those? I think I am one of those, actually. Sorry. She's a real-life Sally. And Tim Burton wanted a character, I'm sure, who fell apart and stapled herself back together like a human Sally. And Monica Bellucci is fine and she's beautiful and she's a good actress. I don't, I don't even remember any of her lines except where's Beetlejuice? Where's Beetlejuice? So she's looking for Beetlejuice because she needs to suck his soul <laughs> so she can have eternal life. That plot doesn't really go anywhere either. And it, I feel like it doesn't really come to a satisfying end either. So I don't really dig it, even though I like her and I like the special effects they use on her. Could have done completely without her. Save her for the third Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Do you think Michael Keaton would show up if I said his name three times? Michael Keaton, Michael Keaton, Michael Keaton. Don't go chasing waterfalls. I don't care if he's slowed down. You just lay there, Michael Keaton. You let Aunt Boo do all the work. Things I don't like about the movie, yeah, there's too many characters, and it's a too convoluted a plot. Too much is too much. Remember the Exorcist movie that came out last year? That was my very first Boo's Reviews. Oh, time goes so fast when you're having fun. That movie was a prime example of more is just more, and arguably more is oftentimes t terrible. <laughs> it just makes something worse the more you pile into it. Kind of like this drink. I, I don't think I needed any of this shit that's in this drink, and it, I think it's going to give me a diabetic coma. But sometimes more is just worse. And so even though I love Monica Bellucci, I love Willem Dafoe. And honestly, he can, he can come in any movie and I would watch it. Oh my God, let me rephrase that. Oh God. Oh man. <sighs> he can cameo <laughs> or guest star in any movie and I would watch it. <laughs> Ew. He could have been a great side character, but again, the plot interwoven with what's going on with Beetlejuice's soul-sucking ex, it just didn't work for me. And Justin Theroux, maybe, maybe keep his character in, but make him a lot less. Give him a lot less screen time. Make him a lot less of a main character, because he had a lot of screen time for someone that's not a very important character in this movie and I did like the you know the slimy guy who's trying to take the place of Lydia's ex-husband but but we didn't like him as a character we knew he was creepy and yeah he just didn't need to be on the screen that long we don't need the dad who was arguably the least interesting character in Beetlejuice we don't need him at all. He could have died years ago. And then the the whole funeral could have just been Astrid's father. No one no one's really upset by the dad dying except Catherine O'Hara's character. We could have made this a lot more we could have upped the emotional ante of it by making a more relevant character die and attending his funeral. But Astrid's dad becomes, he becomes this nothing character. She meets her dead dad again, and it's like a quick couple minute scene that doesn't have any real emotional resonance in it. It, it doesn't, it doesn't really even do anything. 
the way that they killed off Jeffrey Jones's character, which, okay, I'm just going to go into it. Jeffrey Jones, by the way, is not in this movie. That guy was charged with child bleep so good. Don't even, don't even recognize that guy, okay? That guy's a f***ing creep. It's weird that they have him walking around him. It's not him. It's his character walking around eat, half eaten by a shark. They said, we don't need that. Yeah, it was a cool effect. No, nobody needs this. That was weird. Make him. He should have died a long time ago. They dealt with that back then. And then the funeral that they're attending is... Um, Lydia's ex-husband is Astrid's dad. That should have been the the whole thing. Because they even die similarly. They're both like eaten by fish. <laughs> it's, it's weird. It's it's just lazy. It's I feel like it's just lazy writing. I feel like the big budget Hollywood movies like this, I think they feel like they're competing with a Netflix series, Disney Plus series, Hulu series, you know, things like that, that have the space and the time to flesh out all these new characters to really explore different storylines. And so they're like, you know, in this two hour movie, let's just cram all the shit that we can into it. But what they don't realize is that even these Netflix series there are plenty of throwaway episodes that are just filler. I, I don't think that having a longer running time for anything leads to better character development. You can still have really well-drawn-out characters, especially when, when they're coming back, especially in a sequel. You have all the time in the world now. You don't have to recreate ideas and worlds you already have the universe that you created in the first one now let the second one be about these characters developing and how the the original one traumatized them and you can have fun with all of that i know it sounds serious but you could really make that funny you know lydia seeing ghosts is funny and they made one gag out of it in the beginning there's there's one there's one sight gag about her seeing a ghost. It's stupid. Do more with that. Do more with Beetlejuice. He's not on screen very long. And maybe they meant to do that. Maybe, you know, Michael Keaton had some impact in that. I doubt it. He's he's the best thing about the movie. Do something with him. Give him more time to play. It is fun to watch his interaction with Bob, the shrunken head guy. He now works for Beetlejuice, and that's fun. Even the plot of the kid that Jenna Ortega meets who takes her into the underworld, even that plot is resolved too quickly for me. By the time he reveals who he is, it's, it's like, uh, okay. All right, now I said all that, but I still liked the movie. It's fun. It's just way overcrowded, too convoluted. It could have been better if I would have written it. Please, somebody from Hollywood, call me. I will tell you. It's simple. It is simple. I will tell you what we want to see. It is a very simple formula. You stick to the formula because it works. It works. I will have to say, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed myself. Look. I painted my nails for it and everything. Look at that. How cute. I made a drink out of it. I mean, yeah, I've, I've, I'm wearing my punk rock earrings. I did not buy these at Hot Topic, by the way. No, I had a great time with it, but it was too much. I think you should go see it. I think I will see, probably see it again, not in the theaters, but I will probably see it. I'll probably add it to my Halloween rotation of movies that I watch every year because I did have fun with it. It's fun 
to see Beetlejuice on screen. It is fun to see him try to marry Lydia again. That's kind of funny. There's a scene where he does that thing again where he makes everyone sing and dance. I don't even know what song this is, and I know a lot of songs. I know a lot of music. This is a way outdated song, something about a cake in the rain. It's Someone Left the Cake Out in the Rain. I think the song is actually called MacArthur Park. It's weird. It's a weird fit for this movie. I think it was supposed to be the sequel's equivalent of the Banana Boat song, the Harry Belafonte song. Um, from the original. Um, but it doesn't, it's not as familiar. And while it is a, it is a good song, you know what? I think they should have had meatloaf in there. Wouldn't that have been hilarious? Because if, if, if he would have had like, I would do anything for love, I think that would have fit perfectly in place of this cake out in the rain song. I'm not crazy. I wasn't crazy about it. I think, yeah, it's 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 funny, but it, it could have been funnier if it would have been a more relevant song. It's been so long since the original. We have 30 years of music, you know, 80s, 90s, 2000s. You could have picked a Backstreet Boys song and had the audience rolling in the aisles. Any song but the song that they picked, I think would have worked a lot better. Maybe they just didn't want to spend the money on it. I don't know. We're gonna be disappointed no matter what. We're gonna be disappointed. It's not as bad as everyone's making it out to be. I really don't think so. And I'm, you guys know, I'm a bitch and I'm harsh on movies in <laughs> this one. I don't think it was as bad as everyone made it out to be. Maybe I need to watch it again, but I just, I don't think so. I think people are being weird about it. It's not going to be the exact same thing. Everyone's so f older now, except Catherine O'Hara. What the hell is that woman doing? She is fantastic. Is she Canadian? No, she is fantastic. She looks fantastic. She is fantastic in everything. And I simply adore her. So that's it. Now you want to get nuts? Come on, let's get nuts.